on the hunt for the best mixing palette out there for your wet on wet styled oil paintings. In this video right here, we're gonna go over the Bob Ross acrylic mixing palette coming at you right now. Hey, it's me, it's Wild coming at you from my creative control playlist where I bring you the best tips, tricks, and even product reviews just like this in this video right here. If this is your first time here, consider subscribing and hitting that bell so you know when my videos go live. If you're into oil painting and you're looking to upgrade in your oil painting adventure, probably one of the next best tools to actually get is this beast right here. This is the Bob Ross acrylic mixing palette and it is awesome. But what makes this piece of plastic so awesome for beginners and veteran painters out there? Let's take a look at it really quick. If and when you buy your Bob Ross acrylic mixing palette, it will come on a piece of cardboard sealed in plastic and it comes with the directions you need to take care of it, which are very important, which we'll go over at the very end of this video, so stay tuned. One of the best attributes about the Bob Ross acrylic mixing palette is its sheer size. Look at this thing, it's huge. It takes up the upper half portion of my body and that's a great thing. It's actually 23 by 15 and a quarter, which gives you a lot of workspace, which is awesome for all you beginning painters out there. A lot of people like to put their primary colors up here and then use the mid portion for blending of colors of where you're gonna grab back and forth between. And it's awesome because it gives you a lot of workspace between making your paints fatter or leaner over here on this side as well. And this bottom portion is perfect for putting things like your titanium white or mixing white or liquid white or any kind of thin white that you need to add to make layers thinner so that way they stick on top of your paints. Now you're probably asking, why do I recommend the Bob Ross acrylic mixing palette? Well, it's a great palette, but it's not the only option out there. In fact, there's actually a few that I've tried that I will recommend and I will put a link in the description below, but we'll go over those ones in a minute at the end of the video, because if you can't find this anywhere, I do recommend getting one of those acrylic palettes as well. But one of my favorite things about this palette is actually what I designate as the hand guard rail up here. It gives you an extra few square inches of workspace. And why do I think this is important? Well, let's go over it really quick. So if we were just mixing paint right here, and let's just say this was a few different colors I was using, and I had some excess paint on my knife, just like that, generally what a lot of people do is they use this railing to clean off the knife and sometimes their brush. However, when you do this, you leave your skin or clothing exposed as you go ahead and rest this against your clothing. So this is actually not the best spot because you're gonna ruin a lot of your clothes. Now it's okay if you're wearing an apron or something like that, but that's where generally a lot of people clean. They don't go up to the top up here and wipe off their knife and brushes. They do it what's easiest on their open side of their knife, which is right down here. So the nice thing about this is when you're mixing up colors, and you have a little bit extra on your knife like this, you can use this handrail up here and work out that extra excess color or wipe it off like that. Or you can even use this spot to wipe off excess parts from your paintbrush if they're a little too much paint on your uh, fan brush or filbert and you just wanna work a little bit off. This is where I generally work off all my dirty brushes, which is why I appreciate this handrail so much. Now this hand guardrail is what separates this acrylic mixing palette from a lot of its competitors out there. But what about the entire mixing palette overall? Now this mixing palette is awesome because just like a lot of other palettes out there, it's very rigid, it's very sturdy, it's very easy to clean. And one of the best things about it, it's actually very well balanced. When you hold this thing in your hands and you're holding it at your hip or higher up or way down low, you actually don't really feel it that much. It's very comfortable for your hand. I consider having myself medium sized hands and it fits it very well. I've held this thing for hours on end and I've never noticed any fatigue of where I can have it. It balances out extremely well. And one of the best thing is, since it's so rigid, when you take palette knives or palette spades or anything that's gonna be firm going against the acrylic, it's extremely sturdy. Very, very well built and the knife glides well across it. Just a quick note, you will notice scratches over time as you take certain metals to it. So don't worry about it, that's just the way it works. Remember, metal is stronger than plastic. So just make sure to clean it well if you do get any cuts 
bruises, gashes, deep scores in there, anything like that. Just, you know, wipe it down with some warm soap and water. That's a good tip because you don't want any of that dry paint to get deep within there because it's going to cause more cracking within the acrylic. Now I did mention there were some other acrylic mixing palettes that I do recommend and let's go over those really quick. Now they're all generally kind of the same more or less. There are two defining factors out there. Take a look at the size of the mixing palette and also what it is made out of. I do recommend the clear acrylic mixing palettes just because they seem to be a little thicker on the actual depth which means they'll be sturdier and that they'll be more rigid for when you have to take your paintbrush to tap in on them for mixing and your palette knife for when you have to cut across to get either snow or water lines out of things like liquid or magic white. One thing I appreciate about this mixing palette is the cleanup. If you've seen any of my videos before, you know how much of a huge advocate I am of baby wipes. Now, if you have no baby wipes, all you just need to do is just take some lukewarm water, your favorite detergent, you know, Dawn soap, anything like that, that'll eat away at a little slight grime and oil, and just mix it on here with your paper towel or rag and it'll wipe away. But paper towels are nice and easy because you just put it on here and literally the paint just falls right off and it becomes nice and easy and clean. Kind of like your favorite ShamWow commercial. So make sure you just wipe it nice and clean and let it dry and you'll be good to go for your next painting. Now, just a quick bro tip for all you people out there. If you get any type of acrylic canvas, please pay attention to this, this is very important. Pay attention to what the instructions say for taking care of it. A lot of acrylic based plastics can be eaten away by certain chemicals out there. A lot of people like to clean a lot of their paint out, you'd be surprised, with gasoline, kerosene, acetones, things like that. Those will eat away at the plastics of the acrylic based um, mixing palette and it will deteriorate it over time and it'll cause things like clouding or cracking or it'll even just generally just fall apart on you. And when you try to push a little too hard, it's gonna snap. So be careful out there and see what your acrylic canvas can handle in the ways of what chemicals you can put on it. And if you're worried about putting odorless thinner on it, no, that is actually fine. If you are interested to know what other acrylic palettes that I recommend, I'm actually gonna put a link in the description below of two that I've used before that I do recommend. They basically are generally the same thing as the Bob Ross one, but they minus that hand row, which I think is actually worth paying up for. When looking to buy an acrylic mixing palette on Amazon, you do need to pay attention to those two key factors that I mentioned before. But one extra thing that I would like you to take notice of is I don't recommend wooden palettes. Now, there's nothing bad about them. In fact, a lot of professional painters highly recommend them. I just kind of don't like them for wet on wet painting techniques for when I take my knife to it because it actually scores into the wood very deeply at times. And if you're not very diligent about cleaning it on time, you can stain the wood. It's very hard to get that dry paint off. It can kind of warp and ruin that wood. The acrylic ones, they're a little more forgiving. If you actually ever really needed to, you can actually sand a little bit of the paint off by just using a very fine sandpaper. I don't recommend doing that, but it's something that you can do. On a wood one, I've actually ruined my wood one because I kind of forgot about it a day after and I couldn't actually salvage it. So that's just a quick little tip on that. Now, if I've piqued your interest on owning the acrylic mixing palette from Bob Ross, there are only a few places that you can currently get it from. Number one is Amazon, and I will put a link in the description below. But just to let you know, on a disclaimer, on Amazon, this has wild prices, ranging from, I kid you not, I've seen it as low as $20, all the way up to $150. It's hard to get on Amazon. If you can pop on it, the average price I see a lot of time is actually 50 bucks, which I would buy, to be honest, because I do love this thing. But you know, here's a bro tip. Actually just go straight to the Bob Ross Company website. I will put a link in the description below. And they sometimes have it on sale, ranging somewhere between $25 and $35. They don't offer free shipping, but their shipping rates are pretty cheap. And that's actually where I got my first one. So I do recommend going there. There are no other websites I've been able to find. I've checked Jerry's Artorama, I've checked Dick Blick and a few others. It seems like those are kind of generally the only two places that they have. So go ahead and check out the links below if you need them. Well, I hope that got you really excited on owning a mixing palette. It is one of the best tools you can own and it actually does help elevate your painting status. You'd be surprised. 
with the extra workspace you have on here and how close you have it to, how many times you revisit your mixing palette to add more layers of paint onto your painting because it's so close and handy. A lot of us, when we have our paints far away from our canvas, we're kind of restricted on the fact that we're scared to add more layers of paint. And we forget the more layers we add, it can add a lot of depth and character to our painting. So I do highly recommend grabbing one of these bad boys. And if you're a novice looking to upgrade, I say look at one of the acrylics, but there are a lot of basic brands out there that are gonna work well for you as well. So go ahead and check those out. If you guys like this video, Go ahead and give it a nice thumbs up and make sure you come back often because I'm trying to post these about once a week for you. And if you guys want to help me out, make sure you leave a comment below. Remember to subscribe and like. And if you want to go above and beyond, make sure to follow and help me out on my Patreon because it does help go back into all these videos to bring you guys some more awesome content. If you guys like it, make sure you help me out and I will see you all in the next painting video coming up real soon. Peace.